Hello, I'm Thorea Fatou and I'm a Senior Manager in the ZOR's Banking and Financial Services team. From the beginning of 2013, financial services firms in the UK will be subject to a new regulatory order. So why has this come about and what does it mean for how firms will be regulated in the future? In response to the financial crisis, the government has proposed some radical changes. Under the new model, the Financial Services Authority will be disbanded and in its place three bodies will be set up. These are the Financial Policy Committee, the Prudential Regulatory Authority and the Financial Conduct Authority. The Financial Policy Committee will be responsible for the protection of the financial system as a whole and for macroprudential regulation. The Prudential Regulation Authority will supervise deposit takers, insurers and a small number of significant investment firms. This means that approximately 2,000 firms holding £9 trillion worth of assets will be subject to PRA oversight. The Prudential Regulation Authority and the Financial Conduct Authority will share regulation responsibilities that are currently undertaken by the Financial Services Authority. The separation of conduct and prudential regulation will mean that some firms will be subject to dual regulation. These will be the firms that are within the scope of the PRA. All firms will be subject to a baseline level of supervision under a three-pronged approach. Policies and rules on firms' resilience, that's capital, liquidity and leverage. Supervisory assessments and interventions, and policies and mechanisms to support resolution. The proposed approach has been described as judgment-based. The focus of resources will be on higher impact firms, with supervisors adopting a forward-looking and big-picture view. Early intervention will be a key feature of the PRA's proposed approach, with significant emphasis placed on identifying risks to a firm's viability at an early stage and putting in remedial actions to reduce the probability of failure. Financial Conduct Authority will be responsible for the regulation of conduct in the retail and wholesale markets and the trading infrastructure that supports those markets. It will also be responsible for the prudential regulation of those firms that do not fall within the scope of the PRA. The FCA's strategic objective is to protect and enhance confidence in the UK financial system. It will aim to meet this goal through its three consumer-oriented operational objectives. Securing an appropriate degree of protection for consumers, promoting efficiency and choice in the market for financial services, and protecting and enhancing the integrity of the UK financial system. 27,000 firms within the retail and wholesale banking, investment, securities and insurance sector will fall under the FCA supervision remit. It will also be responsible for the prudential supervision of over 24,000 firms that do not fall within the scope of the PRA. As with the PRA, the focus is on early intervention to prevent retail consumer detriment. This is in direct response to criticism that the FSA has in the past focused on obtaining customer redress rather than acting swiftly enough to prevent consumer detriment. Amongst its powers, the FCA will be able to direct a firm to withdraw a financial promotion and even to prohibit the marketing of specific products to consumers. The government's target is for the new regulatory model to be in place and operational by the end of 2012 or early 2013. In the meantime, the FSA will continue to work on the detailed designs for the FCA and the PRA. The current proposals give an overview of the future model. We expect further details in the near future and we will keep you informed of these as they unfold. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>